Low-cost microcontrollers have made most old-school ICs obsolete. Sometimes they come in handy as elegant solutions to some common problems that microcontrollers still have. For example, the Arduino Uno. The Arduino Uno is a pretty good microcontroller in that it has uh, six built-in analog to digital converter pins. But sometimes you need more than that, like say you're reading the moisture level on more than six plants and then you only need a handful of digital pins to process that data and then output it. You know, if you had more than six plants, you would need more than one Arduino. Or you would have to get a rather expensive analog to digital conversion chip, such as the MCP3008, which goes for almost $10 on Amazon for a single chip. And even in situations where you have a mixture of analog and I squared C. In that case, you know, you're going to lose analog 4 and 5, and then you're only going to have 4 analog uh, pins to read. But sometimes you can find a solution through the same kind of chips that the Arduino has replaced. In this case, the good old 555 timer. The 555 timer can be used with its voltage control pin to make a kind of rudimentary form of analog to digital converter in which it uses a, a pulse width modulation signal that is sent to the Arduino and then from the duty cycle we can determine the voltage applied to the pin. Uh, a duty cycle of zero for zero percent of VCC and a full duty cycle for 100% of VCC with a fractional duty cycle somewhere in the middle for a fractional VCC. Uh, this also comes in handy for certain microcontroller boards that don't have a built-in built -in analog to digital conversion function such as the basic stamp homework board right here or the Raspberry Pi. Now, a note about the Raspberry Pi, I haven't actually gotten it to work on that yet. Uh, I tried, but I looked up, and apparently for a pulse in, it doesn't have the kind of precision to really do it accurately, unless someone finds a way to turn down the clock cycle of the 555 completely. Uh, within the oscilloscope, it averages about a, up to about 3 milliseconds is the longest the duty cycle is before it cuts up to being high completely. And then down to 100 or 200 microseconds at its lowest. Quick probing of the 555 timer in this state a bit of an idea about what's happening here. Uh, the voltage control in this case is being handled by this 10k trim pot going into voltage control pin number 5 while the blue output pin is currently going to the input lead of the oscilloscope. The purple obviously going to ground and right now <coughs> the pot is completely to the right with uh, full voltage VCC applied to the chip, and right now pin is high. As we turn down the voltage being supplied to the control pin, you can see it begins to make a square wave with its maximum four completely going high, being about, let's see, so if we count each one of these squares, it's currently set to one millisecond per square. It's about 4 milliseconds is the maximum that the timer can go to before cutting off to being completely high. And as we continue to decrease the voltage, the duty cycle continues to decrease until it's just, just above zero VCC cuts off. Let's pause this really quick. The size of the screen, you can see it's about 0.3 
microseconds is the smallest square wave that the 555 will produce before it can go in completely low. The signal can then be fed into any of the digital input pins. In this case, we're going to go ahead and use pin number 7. Right there. And then we'll upload this simple program, which will be provided in the description of this video. Take a look what we got here. We have the uh, ADC pin number 7 defined. Serial, obviously, and then we define we declare the pin mode to be input. The long value is going to be recorded via pulse in function, very similar to using the ultrasonic sensor. In fact, I kind of got this idea from one of the Max ultrasonic sensors, the singular built-in receiver transmitter units, which I have right here actually on a robot currently using the pulse input. Uh, link to that in the description as well. Really nifty device. It actually has three outputs. Uh, pulse, analog, and serial. And running it actually works a bit in reverse compared to the HCSR04. Instead of triggering the output pulse and then listening for it, it continuously pulses at a constant rate and then you have to actually set a pin high to inhibit it. So it works a bit differently. But I digress. So the value works as a function of the pulse in high and to get either end when it's either high or low. If you leave the pulse in after a certain amount of time it will expire and it will return a zero. Now, if it returns a zero we have a couple of conditional statements where after it returns zero, it will then, if it returns zero, do a traditional just digital read of the pin. And then it, from that, it can determine if it's completely full, high, or getting no voltage, low. And then outputs the value, and delay is 1,000 seconds, or 1,000 milliseconds. So let's go ahead and start this. Open up the serial monitor. And from there we're already starting to get some low values. Uh, this is about trim pots almost turned completely down. Let's go ahead and turn it completely down. See, low, low. Starting to turn it up again. Starting to get values. Turning it up more. And more. And more. And more going, keep going, then it goes high at the other end. And then just below high it averages about 3,000, sometimes it jumps that last in the last reading before it goes completely high at something in the 4,000, 5,000s, but you can use software however you apply this yourself. You apply it for whatever you need. I've done this with uh, light sensors before, would work with moisture sensors, good for those kind of things. And you can just kind of determine the specifics in your software of how you would, you, you would like to apply this. But, yeah, you know, for a chip that's about 10 cents max, you know, not bad for that. You know, for the, we are using it for, sometimes that can beat having to go out and buy a $10 chip. You know, save some money wherever you can, you know. And the cool thing, too, is, again, with the Arduino being developed, it kind of made a lot of these chips obsolete. But it's cool to find ways in which you can combine this old, the old technology and the new technology to find solutions to problems. And just for the heck of it, here's some video of the 555 running with a photoresistor attached to the voltage control pin. Um, and here's our serial output coming from the Arduino. Uh, an ambient light registers in about the thousand, the low thousands range. When I put my hand over it, value drops and to about 700, 800s. If I could put the sensor in an even darker environment, it would drop even lower. And you set a fly, flashlight on it, like so. The values climb to the 2700 range, 28, 
3000, flashlight goes off, drops back down. So as you can see, it's not the perfect system for analog to digital conversion, but for what it does and the price range it does, you know, getting a, you know, getting a, you know, analog to digital conversion for a nickel and a penny, it's pretty dang good.